Hi there folks and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Now if you guys follow me for a little bit, you might recognize the back end of this boat. Don't know if you can see this, it says Sea Nymph. This is a 1969 14 foot Sea Nymph, all aluminum boat that I worked on, restored on, made a little bit better. And uh, we're gonna take a look at it about a year later. Uh, this is one that I put a new transom board in, put some gel coat coverings over the, over the transom board. I also uh, replaced this piece on the back here, plus we put a casting deck up front. We also did this bright brightener, aluminum brightener from Napa. Stuff works fantastic. Strips it right down to bright brand new aluminum, which is really amazing. And then I clear coated over the top of it with just some rattle can clear coat. So I want to look at that and see how it's held up a year later. And this has been under a tarp, but this has been parked outside the entire time I've had it. With a cover over it, of course, like I do on all my other boats. So we're going to, and also we're going to take another look at this uh, 1969 uh, Johnson 20 horse. Uh, this is the one we redid the gearbox on. Other videos showed me rebuilding that gearbox. And uh, we're going to see if it runs okay or starts it hasn't been started for probably about, gee, I want to say maybe nine months. I'm just guessing here. But uh, we're going to go through things and kind of just give it a once over and look at it and see how things look a year later. I thought that would be a good thing to do so you guys can see what some of these repairs look like a year later if you're going to do your own boat. And uh, I'll leave links below. I think I have a whole series on this 69 Sea Nymph. Um, but I always thought it was kind of cool that I had a, the same vintage year outboard on the boat. And this is the, this is the old outboard that I actually, these have a manual or have no P-hole. I added a P-hole to this one. So let's just look at this and let's see how things are a year later. Now this cover has done a fantastic job of keeping this boat dry out of the sun and, uh, keeping it from uh, filling up with water, because that's what'll happen if you don't have a cover. And yes, boats are designed to be in the water, and people will go, they're designed to be in the water. What's wrong with them getting wet? Well, they're not designed to have water on the inside and live in the water on the inside. It's just like anything. You leave it outside, it's gonna deteriorate. The sun will eat its lunch. I also have this awesome backbone cover support that I have showed you videos. Like I said, all the links to all the videos that pertain to this boat will be below in the description. If you have any questions after that, feel free to leave me a comment. Now would be a good time to like and subscribe, the subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. What are you waiting on? It doesn't cost you anything. And you'll be notified immediately of any of the stuff I put out. And if most of you have followed my channel for a little bit, you'll recognize this whale, I'll call it a whale bone, whale, whale rib cage structure made out of, this is Schedule 40, three quarter inch rigid PVC pipe. It's designed for outdoor use, underground use. It's, it's uh, UV resistant, so it holds its shape. This thing here, I can actually pick it all up in one piece and take it off. Everything fits together tightly. It's pretty cool. It's the, it's the way to do it if you're gonna do a whale backbone. Keeps the cover supported. So let's take a look inside here. There's some leaves in here from last fall that I didn't vacuum out, but overall, she's in pretty good shape. I know what you're excited about. You're excited to hear that engine run, and so am I. Now, because I have kept this covered, this carpet has remained factory fresh and beautiful. Remember, I put a hatch under here. There it is. As you can see, all, I did protect all this with a clear. All the wood has been highly protected. Hey, there's that six inch or eight inch. What size is that? Da -da -da -da. Eight inch Crescent inch I've been looking for. I'll be. Oh, there it is. But we still got life jackets, flotation device, paddle, 
some bug spray, a couple of bumper buoys and whatnot in there. And plus there's plenty of room for other stuff. This still looks fantastic. This you can still walk on, stand on, do whatever you want to. The hinges are hidden underneath the carpet. Let's go ahead and get this backbone out of the way. Let's see how easy it is to remove. Usually all I do is unhook the one side like this and I can grab about two of these midway through and just lift it right off of there just like that. One piece. The cool part is I can put it back on as well as one piece. Inside the boat still looks fantastic. The seats are still in great shape because why? They haven't been exposed to the sun. Now as you can see it gets pretty warm underneath the cover obviously and all those little self sticky wire management things that have zip ties on them have saw fit to remove themselves. Well, that's kind of a bummer. So maybe I need to come up with a better fastener for that. Maybe you just JB weld them on, but then you got weld, you got plastic JB welded that's gonna be hard to get off. Let's take a look at the transom. Now the transom, this was a two by that I put in here that goes all the way across a big, big, no, what did I do? No, I used plywood. I used marine grade plywood, that's right. I almost forgot, double thick. So it's an inch and a half. I think I used, yeah, it looks like three quarters. So this is inch and a half marine grade plywood that I put here and then gel coated it, uh, resin and gel coat. And it's still in fantastic shape other than, as you can see, if I just rub the old, I got silicone around all these bolts to seal up with everything when I put it on. And it collects a little dust and dirt, but as you can see right there, that cleans up. Makes it look like brand new. Fire extinguisher still looks good on the back here. The outboard motor still looks fantastic. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull the cover off it in a minute. Let's look at the back side here. Now, I put this drillless transom mount on that I made myself. There's a video about that. I'll leave that in the link below how I did it. And if you got any questions, you can ask. But I also used, I tested, golly, 12 different adhesives. I'll send you a link to that video. Be in the description. Um, about this drillless transom mount that you can put your transducer on so you don't have to put extra holes in your boat. This didn't have any holes in it down here and I didn't want to add any more holes to the darn thing. So what I did is use some starboard and made me a, a holeless transom mount that you can screw screws right into here. And a year later, that thing is still, if you apply it and do it right, it'll stick. It may come off years from now, but it ain't come off in a year. I just wanted to make simple note of that. There again, the clear coat on this thing is still holding up very well. There's no more oxidation happening as a result of the brightener because it would have easily have oxidized by now uh, and look more like the inside of the boat currently looks. Now the other feature that I put on this trailer when I did it is this transom saver. Goes down in, pins down there on the bottom of the trailer. I would highly recommend doing that. What that does is take, see I can put a lot of pressure on here and it doesn't put the pressure on the transom. This isn't heavy gauge aluminum. This plywood obviously gives it all of its strength and all between that and the half inch on the outside. Uh, I did this particularly because particularly I wanted to use this boat to do a lot of testing of motors. When I got done with the motor, I wanted to test the motor, make sure it's gonna work. And here we go, here it is. It absolutely does work and it's lasted a while and uh, still looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and pull the cover off this motor and take a look. Now when I got this motor, if I'm not mistaken, this is the one that had, this was full of mice nest, but none of the wires were chewed. And obviously I added a kill switch to it. And this thing is still looks, I mean, I ain't kidding you. This thing looks brand new inside. Just a little bit of spider webs here, but that's nothing to be concerned with. Man, this thing's just, just a beautiful, beautiful example of a 1969 Evinrude or Johnson 20 horse. Just a beautiful example of a 1969. I mean, think about this, 69 guys, I was born in 64. So it's 52 years old and still looks magnificent. I mean, this thing, you can't find a better example of a of one this age. And we're gonna fire it up today to see if the doggone thing still will run for me. Another feature I've got on this boat here is I've got 
a battery box that can fit right underneath that front seat there so it's out of the way and I've got cabling running clear back that you can hook a controller motor up to so the battery can be a ballast especially if for a guy my size it's nice to have that extra ballast up front and then when I'm sitting in the back it doesn't feel like I'm sitting in the back of a canoe pointing up a 45 degree angle to the sky it actually balances out really well it runs really well in the water so low and if you're taking your kid fishing or a buddy fishing, it balances out there as well because you got the motor on the back. The other feature that I obviously added to this boat is I bolted on a piece of half inch aluminum and I've got wood screwed to the front of it so you can hang your trolling motor right on here. And the nice thing about that is you can always use the trolling motor to troll around with. You can save some fuel when you're trolling by using it instead of a, or if you're just moving from a spot close by to close by, you know, instead of going halfway across the lake, there you go. It works out really well and it's sturdy. It will not give out. It will literally rip the back of your boat off before it would actually break, which is how I like to build them. Now I had to transfer the motor to my barrel here to test it out because this particular type of motor doesn't work with muffs. You can buy a special attachment that goes on the bottom if you want to just run it with a garden hose, but I also find it just as easy to stick it in a bucket of water or a small trash can or anything like that. You can put a small trash can behind the boat and just give it a test. Usually me, I test it once per season before I go out. This way I have known reliability when I drop it in the water that we're gonna have a good boating day. Cause when your motor don't start, it's not a good boating day. That's all there is to it. And we're gonna fire this thing up and let it run for about 10 or 15 minutes there just to see how she runs once she's warmed up. We'll do a cold start here, obviously. Then we're gonna do a warm start. All right, we got enough water in the tub we're going to give the primer bulb a few squeezes to get her the bowl filled up i can see i installed a clear fuel line on this thing so i can see there we go the bulb's good and hard it's 88 degrees out but i'm still going to choke because i know these old two strokes like a little choking action and we're going to give it a yank i got it on the start position just right at right where it's the cam wheel just starts to hit the ramp Give her a yank, see what happens. Nope. Second pull after all winter and most of this summer. Let's see here if I can take the choke off. You can't beat that. That's this motor is so right, it's not funny. Dropping right down to an idle right away. That thermostat open there. Water's coming out of the pee hole. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. This is in gear right now. Back to neutral. Quiet running motor. Put her back in gear. Whoops. Put her back in gear here. Snips right into gear. I can't run a wide open in here because I'll splash all my water out, but. She'll boil the water. Back to neutral, reverse. I 
had the release off, that's why I lifted up. Now, that's a fine running motor. Well, I hate to let it go, that's for sure. Pull starting are really easy, folks. I ain't kidding you. I mean, you saw what I did to pull it. You just got to give this thing. Let me see if I got you in the frame here. I'm just going to give it a little short chop of a pull. It ain't going to be much of a pull at all. Just a little, little. Whoops! Almost did it. Yeah, it's just doesn't take much at all. folks this boat one year later still in fantastic shape look at the side there you can see that the clear coat is held up well there is absolutely nothing wrong it's not tarnishing or blistering or doing anything funky so I'm pretty happy with that the motor runs fantastic as you just saw my goodness uh, a better 1969 out there is gonna be hard to find and this thing will run for years and years and years. It'll probably, I mean, it's been around 50 some years and there's no indication to say it won't be around another 50 years. But if somebody's looking for a good lightweight, easy to get in and out of the water, easy to tow behind any vehicle. I mean, you could tow this behind your car, for goodness sakes. Um, easy to launch, easy to put back on the trailer. I mean, it's, it's got everything you need to put a fishing pole in the water this weekend, so. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm just want I've I've done everything I wanted to do to this boat. Now I want to uh, start on another boat. It's a a 16 footer aluminum V bo V bottom as well to do testing bigger motors. If you've been watching my channel a while, you I've been waiting to get Frankenstein in the water. That's the old Suzuki bottom end with a 20 horse or 22 horse Briggs and Stratton V twin motor out of my old lawnmower on top, air cooled. Could be a mud motor. Don't have to worry about worrying about getting the uh, water up plugged up on the bottom end. But uh, yeah, we're uh, we're happy with how this is looking and turning out so far. Um, but don't be afraid to leave a comment. Don't be afraid to subscribe. Don't be afraid to give me a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing. I thought this would be a good one, uh, a reveal after a year just to see 
what kind of condition this boat's in and you know what's it going to take so you if you decide to fix up a boat to do it so a year later it's still in what i'd call pristine condition as well so folks if it ain't broke fix it till it is this is michael saying enjoy life get out there have fun and i'll see you on the next video pa pow and ker chow <laughs>